Hi, this is Tag again, and today I want to do a video on SPD modding and its uses for both reviving dead memory sticks and also making memory sticks run better on very old platforms with weak memory controllers. So I know that Lumi already did a video on this uh, about two years ago, and I'm going to link that in the corner right here. But I keep getting asked questions about this, so I thought I would do my own take on this, trying to sort of add my own experience to this and also try to make it shorter. Let's see how that goes. Anyways, this is your RW Everything, basically a utility that can read a bunch of SM bus stuff on your computer and including the SPD, so the little uh, chip that is on each memory stick that contains information like timings and today XMP. So for our modding, we are basically going to try to turn off parts of the memory stick. So for that purpose, uh, the relevant bits here you can edit are, bytes I mean, are 04, 05 and 07. Now 04 and 05 control the density of your individual um, memory ICs and 07 um, controls the amount of ranks that the stick has. So let's pull up a nice little website I found, or rather I found through Lumi's video, thanks for that. Uh, I did my testing before that video and sort of just did it by trial and error, but here is a really good explanation. So basically, uh, byte 4, density and banks, so banks doesn't matter because as it says, everything has 8. And density basically just means how much memory each uh, memory chip has. Now, this is not how much it physically has, this is how much basically the memory controller thinks it is. Uh, so for our, our use case, we are basically going to turn off half the memory chip, or at least make the memory controller think that we only have half of the memory uh, chip left. So we would jump down from 1 gigabit per IC to 512 gigabit, uh, 512 megabit. So this would be changing the byte 4 here from 02 to 01. But then we also need to change uh, the way the memory is addressed. Uh, from my experience, if you don't do this, basically either it still gets detected as one gigabit or it just doesn't post because the memory controller is confused. Uh, this is a bit dependent on the platform uh, and on the motherboard manufacturer even for some reason. Anyways, uh, basically what you want to go, what you want to do is for each step you go down up here. So one gigabit to 512 megabit or two gigabit to one gigabit or two gigabit to 512 megabit you want to go down an equal amount of steps here. As you can see, this, this is for two gigabit chips, this for one gigabit chip, this for 512 gigabit, uh, megabit chip. And then you want to see what your program tells you. Uh, here, the amount of rows is important. So in our case, we have uh, here 11. So 14 rows times 10 columns. So you want to remove one row if you have the density. So you want to set it to 13 rows, 10 columns. Uh, if you had the stick that is uh, using 14 rows, 12 columns, you wanted, would want to jump down to 13 rows, 12 columns, and so on. So this is the basics on, on the modification of the, the, the density. Now let's quickly move on to byte 7. This is just how many... Uh, ranks your stick has. Now basically for desktop stuff uh, this is also how many like sides the memory stick has ICs on. There is basically on desktop there is only x8 chips being used uh, except for some low performance OEM sticks. I've, I've seen x16s as well but anything that is relevant for overclocking x8. So basically you can see 09 means 09 we have two ranks 
of x8 sticks, so both sides of the, the PCB are populated on this stick here. And we can disable one. Now, disabling a rank is going to cost you a certain amount of performance. It's not going to be that bad, but there is a huge upside to this, I would say. Uh, this is not really relevant for, let's say, x58 and up. Uh, it's, it's not even that relevant for x48, so the last 775 um, chipset, basically. It is, however, relevant for stuff like P35. P35 has a very, very weak memory controller compared to x48 and uh, even P45. So from what I've tested so far, uh, there's going to be a video about P35 and stuff like that soon. Anyways, uh, P35 really likes its single rank dims. So you can actually take a fully working dim and disable one rank. Now this disabling one rank in software doesn't harm your memory at all. You can just re-enable it later if you want to run it uh, at dual rank mode. So this is something I would recommend as a tweak if you can't get any memory overclock out of or anything proper out of something like um, P35 uh, X38 to a certain extent, though I didn't do much testing there. And also if you have a unfortunately weak X48 board, that could also be an option. But that's just uh, basically the use of working sticks and also obviously dead sticks. Now let me quickly move on to the bench and show you in practice how we are going to do this. And then I'm going to actually revive obviously a stick I know that is revivable, but I'm actually going to revive a stick uh, and you can see how it's done. Okay, here we are. So these are our little two examples. Now, first thing I want to note here, as I said, you can turn off a rank, so half of the memory stick. Unfortunately, you can't select which half. Uh, Easy way to tell though which half you're turning off, or at least on these PCBs here, is you have little indicators here saying D0 to D7 here. And on the other side, you have D8 to D15. Now you're going to turn off the higher numbers here. Uh, I think. But this could be wrong, that it's always this side that you're turning off. So you have the notch here and this sits in the motherboard like, like this and like this. So you're always turning off, at least from what I, I think about these and I've seen uh, from single rank dims, you're always turning off Actually, let's get a single rank dim in here to show you. Uh, here is a single rank dim. Uh, you're always turning off basically the side facing outwards. Uh, turning off the side facing inwards. The side facing outwards is your rank one. And the side facing inwards is your rank two. So basically, this side is turned off on both of these sticks. It's a single rank half density and single rank half density. Now one of these runs at normal density too and one of them only runs at half density. So I run them uh, both at half density. So they are basically the same and the memory controller doesn't get all confused and basically runs at single channel or single channel like performance. Uh, so that's that. Now obviously this one is a bit of a deleting fail. Uh, you wouldn't think that a chip like this, a stick like this would run. 
Now, you could in theory fix this if you ripped it off cleanly, which in this case it isn't. So this one is for every single rank, basically. Uh, but you can also just try this fix on any old um, DDR3, especially hyper stick, because hypers like to die a lot, that just doesn't post anymore. So, or throws errors or something. Uh, if you're lucky, your damaged memory chip is on the rank you're turning off, or your bits that are producing errors are in the lower half of the individual IC, basically. So, basically when you have the density, uh, that then your errors are in the part you turn off. Anyways, those two are our examples. This stick I basically rebroke. This has the stock SPD on it, uh, not the one after I fixed it, and it's obviously not gonna work, so let's move on to the bench and show you it not working and how to uh, basically get a completely de dead stick to be detected in your other view everything and flash or change the SPD and then hopefully successfully post this again. Okay, so here we are. This is my little test setup. This is my beat up Rampage 3. So perfect for some memory shenanigans. Let's put in the broken stick and make sure it doesn't post. Come on. You can see there the postcode just going in loops. So let's get something that posts. Now there's two variants here of doing this. One is basically to hot swap the memory stick in as crazy as it sounds. And the other one is to just see if the IMC boots with the broken memory stick installed which it should on x58, but I'm still going to do the hot, hot swap variant. So this is a totally different stick. Now this is a very good trick for you, uh, because then you can easily identify the SPD um, from the part number. So I use a G-Skill Trident stick here, so I don't accidentally confuse it with my dead Dominator GT stick here. So now we are booting. Okay, now let's do the hot swap. Now this is not something perfectly safe, but if you do it right, it is. Now with this, you basically want to do it like you're told with memory sticks to perfectly push them down on both sides. You could lightly insert them and then push down on both sides because if you wiggle them back and forth like you usually tend to do, uh, you might short out some pads and crash the system or worst case damage something. Though I never damaged something with this before. So there we go. That's a snap. Hopefully our system is still running. Yes. Now RW everything. Actually let me move you over here. So you can have a look at the screen. Very nice. There we go. Now our SPD tab. Okay, SPD tab is there. Now if everything is alright, we have two sticks. Now you can see here, hopefully you can see. Let's get in a bit closer even. You can see here the part number. Uh, this is clearly our G-Skill stick. F something, C9, 2 gigabyte. Okay, let's click on here. It takes the time to load. There we go. CMG, 4GX, and so on. 2KC8. Now, 2 gigabyte stick. Double sided. Now, let's do as I said in the theoretical part. Let's edit this bit. Uh, byte to 01. Done. This to 09. And this, because we know that there is a chip missing, so it's obviously not gonna work double ranked. This to 01, and click right. There we go, it, it says that it may lead to become unbootable, yeah, sure. 
uh, hopefully it leads to it becoming bootable. So now we changed our uh, memory stick to uh, 512 Mbit ICs. We uh, edited the bit uh, the byte 5 accordingly and we changed it to single rank. Let's close this up, okay, shut down the system and I move you back over to the system overview. Okay, let's wait for this to focus. Let's take out this memory stick, take out our little trident boot stick, put this one in the inner channel and see if it works. Wait. Let's zoom out so you can see the postcode. D4, D5. It posts. Now obviously let's boot it, even though it's going to take its sweet time. Because Windows 7 and 512 makes of memory is obviously, obviously not designed for each other. So fast forward somewhere around here. Okay, there we are, OS is loaded up, let's open CPLC. Now, one more uh, possible application I thought of while, while doing this is memory frequency valids. Now, I usually don't do anything related to that, but it might be worth a try disabling parts of your memory stick if you're going for valid. Uh, here you see, we have 512 max of memory now. And yeah, that's basically it. I hope this will help some of you, I don't know, revive some hypers. That's always a good thing. Or maybe get some better memory valid. Actually, I have to try that now myself. Uh, never thought of that before. Uh, mostly because I don't like um, doing memory overclocking of any kind, including valid. So anyways, I hope this helped some of you. Bye.